अज्ञान तिमिर अंधस्य ज्ञानन जना शरत कया चक्षुर उ मिनितम येना तस्मे श्री गुरुवे नमः सेल्युटेशंस टू द गुरु हु एनलाइटेंड मी बाय रिमूविंग द डार्कनेस दैट ब्लाइंडेड माय आईज विद दिस आई डॉक्टर विशाखा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फिजियोलॉजी वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस डॉक्टर ए एस पेंटल ओरेशन 2023 along with teachers day celebration every year 5th september is celebrated as teachers day to commemorate the birthday of dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan the country's first vice president and former president scholar philosopher and bharat ratna awardee teachers role is not only in school of education but also in school of life sculpting the morally enlightened humanly homo sapiens so i would like with further ado let's get started and warm welcome to our very own principal dr piyush gupta sir i would request you to please grace the dais our chief guest is the founder director cmcl fimer regional institute ludhiana currently working as chairman of center of health professional education adesh university bhatinda let us all welcome dr tejinder singh the torch bearer of medical education with thunderous round of applause sir please join sir at the dais with equal pleasure i invite dr asmita rathor our medical director of gtb hospital to the dais please It is my honor to invite Dr. Dheeraj Shah, Director of National Institute of Health and Family Welfare to the dais. Everyone please join in with me to give our dignitaries the most cordial of welcomes. Now I would request Dr. Piyush Gupta to welcome Dr. Tejinder Singh by presenting our potted plant. I would once again request Dr. Piyush Gupta to welcome Dr. Asmita Thakur by a potted plant. Everyone please give a round of applause. Thank you so much sir. Next I would request Dr. Farah Khalik, Director Professor and Head Department of Physiology to please welcome our principal Dr. Piyush Gupta and Dr. Dheeraj Shah by presenting a potted plant each. Dr. Piyush Gupta to further comments upon the ceremony with his inaugural address. So please come to the podium. Good afternoon, my all my dear friends, <coughs> respected Professor Tejinder Singh, Madam Dr. Smita Rathor, Professor Dheeraj Shah, all head of the departments, all uh, lifetime achievement awardees present this day, and all staff, non-teaching staff, and students. It's a proud privilege to be here welcoming you all on the occasion of this Teachers Day being just celebrated. We started off last year with our first uh, Professor A.S. Pentel Award and I'll be reading more about him when I read the citation of Dr. A.S. Pentel. So I welcome you all. One word uh, about uh, uh, Professor Tejinder Singh. I think most of you know him and we just... Uh, वो हमें लगता है कब मौका मिले और हम तेजिंदर सिंह को सुने सो इट्स अ इट्स अ प्राउड मोमेंट एंड इट्स अ रियली अ गोल्डन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर अस एट यू सी एम एस थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर एक्सेप्टिंग सर आर रिक्वेस्ट एंड कमिंग ऑल द वे एक्चुअली वेन वी स्टार्टेड एज पेंटल ओरेशन लास्ट ईयर आर फर्स्ट चॉइस वॉज डॉक्टर तेजिंदर ओनली बट लास्ट ईयर यू कुड नॉट कम सो वी हैड बुक दिस लॉट ईयर वन ईयर इन एडवांस सो दैट्स वाई हीज ईयर एंड ही हैज uh yesterday only he has become a proud uh, grandfather so congratulations 
सो ही वॉज थिंकिंग कि अब आज मैं बच्चे को खिलाऊँ या मैं दिल्ली जाऊँ यू सी एम एस बट फाइनली आई थिंक आर लव प्रिवेल एंड थैंक यू सर फॉर गिविंग दिस अपॉर्चुनिटी एंड कमिंग ऑल द वे हेयर सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल आई जस्ट टेक आई से लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्दर प्रोसीड थैंक यू सो मच सर नाउ आई वुड रिक्वेस्ट डॉक्टर अस्मिता टू प्लीज कम टू द पोडियम एंड एड्रेस द गैदरिंग आर चीफ गेस्ट प्रोफेसर तेजिंदर सिंह प्रिंसिपल डॉक्टर पीयूष गुप्ता डॉक्टर धीरज माई फैकल्टी कोलीग्स स्टूडेंट्स एंड फ्रेंड्स Uh, at the outset, I would like to congratulate all the dedicated teachers who are present there for their contribution to medical education, and I also take this opportunity to express my gratitude to all my teachers who are not here but have made me what I am today. Uh, medical teaching is evolving over time. Our duty as a teacher is to impart knowledge, skills, but beyond that is an important component. which we have look at it as an opportunity where probably we can develop the right attitudes where our students are useful to the society it's an honor for us to have professor tejinder singh to deliver this special oration and we all look forward to his speech and on behalf of gtbh ucms complex again all warm welcome thank you thank you so much ma'am Now I would again request Dr. Piyush Gupta to please come to the front and deliver the professor deliver Professor A S Painter citation. We have been going to the medical education conference. I think myself and Tejinder for last 25 years or more than that together. And uh, I still remember when we used to go, 25 years, 30 years ago, we used to go. 25 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 years ago, we used to go. I think things have changed a lot now after, and that is entire because of his efforts in bringing FAMER to India, and then advanced uh, course of medical education, and now the FAMER and the FAMER fellows are everywhere, and there is a huge, uh, rather say, his studentship under his uh, leadership that they have established medical education uh, departments and uh, other training everywhere. So <coughs> I'll read. Uh, the citation for Dr. Altar Singh Pentel. Late Dr. Altar Singh Pentel was a human physiologist, best known for his breakthrough studies and discoveries that added a new dimension in the methods adopted by medical science for studying lung diseases, heart diseases, and neurological diseases. He was among the toppers from his MBBS batch during his studies at KGMC, Lucknow. Everybody expected him to opt for a medical career in clinical specialty. but he loved science and research so he opted for against popular advice he opted for physiology and pursued his md in physiology department during his md thesis only when he was a student he created a new electronic instrument it to study the electrical resistance of the skin and developed a scoring system to identify psychotic patients this system later came to be known as the pentel index and was widely used by the psychiatrists he was awarded rockefeller fellowship and joined a phd program in electrophysiology at edinburgh once again he built his own electronic equipment to study and also devised a new dissection technique to study the deep nerve fibers and that supply the lung and the heart dr pentel ultimately succeeded that was his landmark discovery at building a new method for identification of receptors using this method he discovered the j receptors in the lung atrial b receptors and ventricular pressure receptors in the heart <coughs> gastric stretch receptors in the stomach and mucosal mecano receptors in the intestine and pressure pin receptors in the muscles these discoveries and various other studies about nerve fibers and receptors earned him an unparalleled reputation in a scientist as a scientist across the globe he was recognized as a distinguished scientist and was elected as president of indian national science academy indian science congress association he also founded the society of scientific value he held high administrative and leadership position during this journey some of those were the director of uh, vp chess institute new delhi and the principal of university college of medical sciences he was the first principal 
of this institute and also he was the director general of Indian Council of Medical Research. He holds that distinction of holding the Padma Vibhushan Award. Besides Padma Vibhushan, he was bestowed with multiple national and international awards, fellowships and honorary degrees. Finally, we end with his most famous quote, perfection must be encouraged and rewarded. In his name, we started this oration on the occasion of Teacher's Day and we are fortunate to have the second oration in this series today by none other than <coughs> Professor Tejinder Singh. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the educationally enlightening uh, citation. I would now request Dr. Dheeraj Shah to please come to the podium to deliver Dr. Tijinder Singh citation. Thank you, Dr. Vishaka, and uh, I'm glad that you didn't tell me to <laughs> take this oration. And I'm also happy that such uh, such minor, I would not even call errors, they are taken in good spirit and they are uh, sometimes uh, it doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> Sometimes these errors are like they are magnified and they are like carried to the hurt. But uh, these, uh, this is the way all of us teachers should uh, demonstrate or should set example that uh, this should be taken in a lighter way and should uh, should be made an opportunity to for entertainment. So with this, I am privileged to offer citation to Dr. Tejinder Singh, who is uh, NAMS Emeritus. Professor of Medical Education. Uh, he is the first uh, American Professor of Medical Education by National Academy of Medical Sciences and currently he is the Chair for Center for Health Professions Education, Adesh University, Bhadinda. Uh, he has been Founder Director of CMCL FAMER Regional Institute. The, uh, I would say that coveted FAMER uh, fellowships, the courses have been started by none other than him in India. And he has been uh, the uh, convener for Medical Council of India's Nodal Center for Faculty Development, National Convener for Advanced Course in Medical Education for Medical Council of India, Program in Charge of PG Diploma in Mother and Child Health, INNO, Coordinator of Medical Education Cell, Vice Principal, Dean and Acting Principal at Christian Medical College, Ludhiana. He has been recipient of many orations and fellowships and he has also been designated as advisor to IAP Education Center and Indian College of Pediatrics. He has been recipient of many awards and orations. You name any award in medical education and he has uh, uh, he has got it. Dr. B.C. Roy, National Award for Eminent Medical Teacher. To uh, tell a few, National Board of Examinations Award for Excellence in Medical Education. Major General Amit Chand Memorial Award for Family Medicine. IMA Medical Education and Research Award for Young Graduates. And MEU Lifetime Achievement Award. He has been awarded many orations including those by uh, Indian Academy of Pediatrics and National Academy of Medical Sciences. He has received uh, extensive training, I would say he has conducted extensive training in the uh, field of medical education, student assessment, distance education, training and development and human resource management. And I also remember one of the trainings when Dr. Piyush was saying that uh, few years ago when we were doing any uh, training on medical education, there were very uh, few takers for it. So I remember a training uh, which was held in Delhi only during one of the uh, organizational event where the number of faculty members were finally more than the number of participants. Dr. Tejinder Singh was one of the facilitators but he said that we must go ahead. We have to conduct this training for whoever has come, six or seven participants. When he conducted the training with the equal enthusiasm as he would have conducted for 700 or 70 participants. So salute to him sir. Uh, and uh, he has been associated with the uh, famer Philadelphia USA and a fellow global faculty advisor and international faculty and I, as I told you that he is the one who brought this famer course to India. Uh, Dr. Tejinder uh, has over 315 publications in national and international journals to his credit, uh, a motivation for all of us faculty members to reach uh, somewhere near this figure and he has contributed over 75 chapters in book and is the author editor of 6 books. Uh, he has been involved with faculty development on teacher training, competency based education, distance education, assessment for learning and student support at various local, national and international conferences. Sir, we are uh, we at UCMS are proud to host you and will be honored to listen to your wise words delivered through A.S. Pentalogy. Welcome sir. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, sir. Now, before proceeding further, I would request our dignitaries to please get down from the dais and take our chairs in the front. So, finally, the moment is actually here of the oration. So, I would request Dr. Tejinder Singh to please come to the podium and deliver Dr. A. S. Painful oration. opportunity to come and share some of my thoughts with you. In fact, when uh, Piyush was telling you about that medical education conference that we hosted, it was under the chairmanship of Professor Arjun Srivastava, who is a renowned nephrologist. So in that particular workshop, there were only three participants and 15 minutes into the workshop, one of them came and told us, sir, kindly refund my money because I thought Dr. Srivastava is taking session, so OSCE must be some nephrology technique. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm glad that we have traveled a long distance and come a long way. Let me share with you today some of my thoughts on faculty development as they have evolved over a period of time. In fact, teaching has always been considered a noble act. Bhai Gurudas, who is considered as Ved Vyas of Sikh religion, wrote many years ago, Jaisa Sat Mandar Kanchan Ke Usar Dine, Taisa Kun Ik Sikh Ko Sabad Sikhaye. You know, teaching someone is as pious as erecting seven temples of gold and giving them away in charity. And when Saint Kabir said and placed the Guru at a higher pedestal compared to God, he was probably echoing the same sentiments. It has been a long journey and over a period of time, many changes have actually taken place. There has been a knowledge explosion and more importantly there has been an easy availability of knowledge. The student no longer depends on the teacher at least for knowledge because he has access to cheaper, better, more updated sources of information as compared to teachers who generally rely on 1976 vintage diary or uh, maybe 2000 vintage PowerPoints. The printing press revolution, which actually changed the way we store and retrieve information, is getting reenacted through electronic means. While I was coming from Ludhiana this morning on the train, not a single person who was not on the mobile, you know, looking and searching for something, something, something. I'm sure even in your classrooms, especially the friends sitting at the back, could easily be, you know, searching something on their necks when you are actually delivering a talk to them. And this has been not limited to only cognitive domain. In fact, there is increasing use of simulations and virtual reality for skills. With the result that the students and teachers of today, they have less and less dependency on real patients and hospitals. So this has resulted in a changing role of the teacher. If we view the teacher as the old timer who is there only to give information or provide knowledge, then probably there has been a whole lot of change. In addition, the medical practice has also changed. In fact, medical colleges are actually turning into big and bigger ICUs. Common cases hardly come to medical. When I was at CMC Ludhiana, I don't remember any hydrocele or hernia coming to the hospital. All that you would get is some very complex cases which the student is unlikely to see again in his or her life. The medical care is managed because of insurance and because of so many other things 
the way we treat patients has actually changed there is almost no exposure to common diseases and the species or family physicians has actually almost vanished and this new competency based curricula actually added fuel to the fire of vanishing competency based physician not only medical practice has changed but even educational trends have changed so if you look at the current educational trends the emphasis is now shifting from mere possession of knowledge to the ability to apply that knowledge because that is what constitutes a learning in fact even definition of learning is changed from merely knowing to application and now with competency based curricula coming accreditation requirement i believe you had a nag inspection very recently where you have to show your application based teaching societal expectations not only expectation but even lot of societal changes have happened high cost of education commercialization of education that's okay but what really bothers me is the change in the perception and mindset of the students from shikshaarthi to pariksha you know they don't and when i say they don't think that i am any different from you if i was in that position maybe even my approach would probably have been the same they learn for the sake of gains in our famous fellowships one of the participants tried to introduce the case based learning and the first question which the students asked him was will it help me in getting high marks in pg entrance examination now when everything is centered around examinations then probably there are a lot of issues and then rules regulation judicial inter many of you may have read about the 12 roles of a teacher given by harden now these roles span the various activities which a teacher is supposed to perform but unfortunately most of the time our focus is actually either on being an information provider or maybe assessor but there are a whole lot of other functions for example facilitation of learning for example student mentoring uh, curriculum planning resource creation and being a on the job role model are some things which actually go unemphasized and if we look at what factors influence student achievement then a slightly different picture emerges let's look at what influences student achievement and these are the effect sizes that means one effect size which would double the standard deviation so feedback prior cognitive ability instruction quality and so on and this data comes from a very big meta analysis by hetty but what is interesting that out of all factors which have an influence on student achievement majority of them are actually being controlled by teachers so maybe it is the student who learns maybe it is the student who has the responsibility to learn but to provide a conducive atmosphere for learning is within the realm of the teachers responsibility there is a term called history of the future try to look for it and very interestingly i came across this paper published in the year 2000 and this gentleman benor he conceptualized the role of a medical teacher 20 years from then and i think today is the point when we actually are standing at that phase when all these things were supposed to be applicable and what is interesting is that whatever banner had conceptualized in the year 2000 many of them are actually coming true in 
2022 if not in 2020 distance learning online learning self directed learning do these terms sound familiar yes 22 years before somebody predicted what a future medical teacher's profile would look and often a concern is raised that we have 25 years of teaching experience so you mean we were not teaching all right till now I still remember the first workshop that we had done at CMC Ludhiana I was only an assistant professor and a professor of biochemistry who was a retired brigadier got up said the problem arises because again we conceptualize the role of teacher as an information role. These are some of the functions which a teacher has to perform in the classroom. And if you look at the difference then experts have a better score always as compared to experience. Problem with experience, and I can say now this because with white beard and all that, I am also in the same league of experience. But problem with experience is that it is only one year repeated 25 times. It's not really 25 years. And that is we are not willing to accept. Looking from the student's perspective, what it takes to be a good medical teacher. This publication by Sutkin, which appeared in Academic Medicine in 2008, they collected more than 4,900 studies of what students want in their teaching. And interestingly, the first thing they wanted was the medical or clinical knowledge. And if you look at the rest of the things, it is either knowledge or non-cognitive skills. Nowhere students have said good PowerPoints, good presentations, good dramatics. Just knowledge and non-cognitive skills. That is what the students actually want in their teachers. And coming from 4,900 publications, it's a massive data, not a small amount of information. So if we put all these together, then what does faculty development mean? And the definition given by Steinert and Group is one of the most respected definitions of faculty development. And if you look at certain key points, then what emerges is that faculty development is not uh, uh, isolated activity. It's not that I am doing something for myself, so I am doing faculty development. Or one person is doing some workshop, so that is faculty development. So it's a well-organized, systematic process where the focus is not only on teaching, but also on instructional design, scholarship, personal development and implementation of a professional development plan. If we look at the Indian scenario, it was in 1975 that uh, national teacher training centers, five of them were established in India in collaboration with the University of Illinois Chicago. They continued their work for a very long time. And I must give credit to them that they worked at a time when education was not valued. Today, because of MCI, NMC, etc., etc., you are forced to do certain educational activities. That time there was nothing. But still, they managed to cover a fairly good number of people and convey them the basic concepts and principles of <coughs> education. FEMER came in 2006. 2005 was in Mumbai, 2006 Ludhiana, and 2009 Coimbatore. With 
medical council then medical council of india getting involved in 2008 was that faculty development got a real moment because not that teachers wanted to learn about education but because in the inspection forms there was a column have you done a basic workshop so if you don't write no then there would have been a problem and if we look at the content of the faculty development programs then they have been changing depending on our conceptualization of learning i'll give you some example so what is good teaching that was the deciding factor because after all what was the purpose of faculty development good teaching so what is good teaching would decide what was taught in the faculty development program so earliest conceptualization was that teaching skills are standardized and they must be learned exactly as written in the book of course there was no internet that time but you could see photocopies floating from one college to another where all the teaching behaviors were broken into small 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 checklists and those checklists were to be religiously followed the checklist for lectures the first item was starts with humor now one of my colleagues who was supposed to be starting lecture series on neonatology struggled very hard to find a joke on the neonates and even when he found it came across you know which was not ludhiana based so ultimately you know it got modified like this that a new born baby asked the nurse what is there for breakfast and she said chole bhature and baby said oh again ludhiana not only teaching was to be standardized but good teaching was only good delivery and some of you might have read this story of dr fox you know scientific publications showing that non medical people could deliver a medical lecture using good slides and uh, body language etc etc and getting very high rankings from the students and criticism not feedback criticism of the teachers will improve in delivery skills and this got so much ingrained in our psyche that a very useful simple technique like micro teaching came to be branded as putting the teacher under the microscope to find his fault fortunately this didn't go beyond the workshops It didn't become a part of the normal activities of a teacher in the second phase good teaching means having teaching skills which parallel the way students learn so from pedagogy the concept of anthropology and while pedagogy was teaching children anthropology was helping adults learn so as medical teachers for example you are not teaching them like children you are helping them learn and if you get involved in reflection then it will promote construction of knowledge and use of knowledge and therefore good teaching was considered as synonymous with good learning not good day good teaching was synonymous with good learning and if you look at the progression then what you find is that from the initial behaviorist that is checklist based the second cognitivist reflection based and third the reflecting and incidentally these get reflected into micro teaching one micro teaching two and micro teaching three philosophies that we are currently following now where is the role of training in all this training is an investment in future i do not want to say that training is useless because the training is the starting point but somehow medical schools are very reluctant to send teachers for educational training and apology piyush but if somebody was to ask the principal send me for interventional radiology he will say yes very good go ahead but if somebody was to say send me for a asky work for you to do and that's very common everywhere 
and even when sent you know they expect when you come back everybody in your class should pass you should have at least 10 distinction you should get some award i have been asked many times back home in my own institution you are doing medical education for so many years you know you got the best teacher in us i have no answer for that the reason is that the outcomes of faculty development are not immediate defined or measured so it's not that you will look at some teacher or you will peep into some classroom and say oh trained teacher oh, this is untrained teacher that does not concern some of the research like for example our own research suggested that faculty development improves self efficacy belief of the teachers it improves the conceptualization and promotion of learning it shifts the emphasis from transmission to collective instruction and so comes training paradigm now what is training paradigm training paradigm is that you can classify teachers into trained and untrained and once trained your status changes from untrained to trained and after that nothing else is and unfortunately if you look at that all government programs most of them operate on this principle how many trained here is the training and so what is the role and responsibility of the organization to send people for training or to call somebody in the institution and conduct a training and after that everything is i missed i, I think i missed the word sorry <laughs> because most of most of government programs when i mention i now training has been in use for almost 30 years I am been seeing seeing medical education training for 30 years, 1975 onwards. <coughs> and most of the times when we measure the effect of such training, what is that? Either it is brahmada, or you ask a question after training, you ask the same question again. So show a small bar, then show a big bar. Oh, wow! What a great effect we have created with our training. But if you look at the change as a result of this training, that is missing. that is lagging some so people actually call training as educational equivalent of junk food or uh, if we want to use another example it's a a rocking chair you know it, it keeps you busy it gives you pleasure it keeps you occupied but doesn't take you anywhere so what is the utility of training training as i said is the beginning of all the work so training has to be applied at the workplace and this process that is learning somewhere and coming and applying back to your workplace is what is called transfer of training globally it is less than 10% so we can be little happy that we are not alone in the, our teachers not applying training but unless we promote application of training all efforts in training are useless if i give you a common example you have a saucepan you put milk into it for boiling keep it on flame now the idea is that saucepan will get hot and in the process transmit all that heat to milk which will then boil now imagine a scenario where saucepan keeps on getting hot hot and hotter but doesn't transmit that heat to milk what would happen would you spend money on saucepan or on gas in that particular situation problem and so comes the developmental part which is different from training because development requires unlearning of old practices and that is probably one of the most difficult things for any human being to do I have been doing this for last 25 years. You, you may be say I am wrong. I have been teaching like this for so many years. You think I am wrong? And what development paradigm also says is that changes are generally implicit rather than tacit. You can't just look at a person and say he has changed because of training. 
Another problem with training and development is the issue of relapse. You go for a training, learn how to use OSCE, <coughs> come back, talk to your HOD, sir or ma'am, I have learned about OSCE, want to start an art department. What is the first reaction? So you have to make a and come back. So you have killed all the Or you start OSCE and then your colleagues and peers they look at you and say, I'm ready to go. I'm going to go. So you go back to where you had started. And therefore, the organizational responsibility now is not only providing training, but also a culture where such training can be used and applied. I'll give you one example from CISP training. Now many of you might have undergone this uh, CISP training either at your own institution or at the regional nodal centers. We assessed the stages of concern of medical teachers. And stages of concern tells us how much a person is ready to apply the new knowledge and skills to actual job. And what you look here is that there is hardly any difference between those who underwent CIS and those who didn't undergo CIS. And even where people had undergone CIS, the profile actually would still be interested but non-user. Maybe we have increased their knowledge, right? But as far as application of this knowledge is concerned, we have failed to make a difference. We added one more parameter. We compared FEMAR and ACME versus non-FEMAR and non-ACME. Again, there was no difference. So, adding more training would probably not have helped even in that situation. In fact, we can draw a lot of parallels between what we see here and what happened in Gita. If we talk in current terminology, Arjun had done almost every sort of training, you know, doctoral courses, short term fellowship, long term fellowship, and he was the only person who went alive to heaven to learn the art and science of weapons from Indra and Shiv. Probably the only person to have gone alive and then come back to earth. But when the time to use that training came, he gave up. He simply gave it. And at that point of time, Krishan didn't tell him, okay, okay, go for one more fellowship, then we'll find out. <laughs> no. In that discourse of three, three and a half hours, spanning over 700 shlokas, it, <coughs> it actually surprises me that there is, there is not even once not even once a mention of war. So what Krishna did? He addressed his attitudes. And let me share another research that we had. We used Bandura's theory to find out what helps people decide whether to apply this new training to their job or not. Now, if we were to go on subjective norms, that means what will MCI say, what will college say, what will other colleges say, what will other departments say, then the contribution is only 0 0.07. If you look at perceived control, I am very confident that I can apply your screen measure. 0.21. And what is the best input? That is when you are convinced that what you have learned is going to be useful for the students. So if you think that your innovation is impacting learning, you will apply. So training alone is not the solution for faculty learning. We have to provide more opportunities for discussion, more opportunities for people to open their hearts, clear their doubts, and that is when training probably will be successful. In fact, you can actually see 
faculty development as immunization. So it is not that you give one general booster for everything. You have to give specific in shots for specific diseases. It requires time. You can enhance its effects. You can actually suppress the effect. Effects wane over time. And you also need to provide boosters for the effect to be made. So probably the same approach of faculty development needs to be applied to the process of faculty development. Abraham Lincoln had very rightly said that if you give me six hours to chop a tree, I will spend the first four hours in sharpening my eggs. And I leave you with this question, when did you as a medical teacher last sharpen your eggs? Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir, for your pearls of wisdom and oration so enlightening. I kind of found this quote from sirs only that amusing, that without application and follow-up, training is just an equivalent of junk food. Thank you so much, sir. Now I would request Dr. Piyush Gupta to felicitate Dr. Tidinder Singh by presenting Angulastram. by presenting an angubastram, a scroll, and a small token of appreciation. Ashmita ma'am and Dr. Dheera sir. We will call up the UCMS Lifetime Achievement Awardees by alphabetically. The first would be Professor Vasudev Banerjee. Uh, he is not with us now, he is out of India. But whenever he will come, we will acknowledge to sir. Sir is top 2% of worldwide scientists from India as stated by the Stanford University study 2020. Expertise in genobiotic induced immunomodulation and neurotoxicity. Sir has almost guided uh, more than 185 students as a supervisor and co-supervisor and PhD students includes. His credit in publication in journals, preceding reports and books is more than 330 plus. Major extramural research project executed as a principal investigator and co-investigator was in more than 28 or 30 number. Scopus H index of 326 research paper till date is 51. Citation index of 326 research paper till date is 9749. I10 index of 326 research paper till date is 184. So now I would like to call our next UCMS Lifetime Achievement Awardees, Professor N.K. Agarwal. He is former professor and head department of Forensic Medicine. Sir, he, UCMS alumni staff, staff advisor is more than 30 years. He is a member academic council in University of Delhi. National and international publications, more than almost 50 plus. Various state and national awardees. So I request to Principal Sir, Ma'am and Dheera Sir to felicitate us. So our 
नेक्स्ट विल बी प्रोफेसर थैंक यू वेरी मच टू यू सी एम एस एंड एवरीबडी प्रेजेंट हेयर टू ऑल माई टीचर्स ऑल दो स्टूडेंट्स आर ऑल्सो दी टीचर्स ऑफ दी टीचर्स हेयर आई लाइक टू से दैट आई ज्वाइन इन दिस इंस्टीट्यूट इन नाइनटीन एटी टू वैन मोस्ट ऑफ अवर स्टूडेंट्स हैव नॉट बॉर्न इवन एंड आई वॉज देयर ए परमानेंट एम्प्लॉय ऑफ नाइनटीन एटी टू एंड टिल टूडे दैट इज नॉट टूडे दिसंबर एटी ट्वेंटी टू आई रिटायर बिफोर दैट आई वॉज दी एम बी बी एस स्टूडेंट ऑफ दिस कॉलेज ओनली I have never gone to this out of this institute and remained in this institute from 1975 till December 22. I think it is the longest and served as head of the department also from July 2001. That is around 22 years. This all happened with the cooperation of all of you and all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. So our next professor is Professor Neelam Vani, ma'am. He is former professor and head of the Department of Physiology. He has had Faculty of Medical Sciences, Delhi University, two thousand twenty to two thousand twenty-two. Dean of Ayurveda, Homeopathy, and Unani Sciences. MCI assessors at various institutes of India. Editor of Indian Journal of Physiology and Pharmacology, co-author of Physiology Textbook in Hindi for Technician, national and international publications in her credits, Best Teacher Award in Apicon 2021 to 2022, observer of exams for pre and para medical subjects at University of Mauritius. Practically my second home. I have worked here for 33 years, and I'm really grateful to my seniors and my colleagues and all the faculty and non-teaching and non-teaching staff of the UCMS. I'm thankful to all. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your lovely words. I request to uh, Professor Tejinder Singh sir, please join us on the dais. So now our next professor is Professor Ram Prakash. He is former professor and head department Department of Anatomy, visiting professor to BP Kerala Institute of Health Sciences, Dharan, Nepal, where taught neuro anatomy and special senses in problem based learning curriculum. <laughs> Member committee for revision of ordinances, XSD of University of Delhi, 1995. Dr AJ Mehta Memorial Gold Medal awarded by Anatomically Society of India in 1986 for the best paper MM Bank Memorial Medal awarded by Delhi College Old Student Association in Delhi for outstanding research and dedicated teaching 1992 published 78 papers Chairman Medical Council of India Committee for preparing curriculum for post graduate degree in anatomy 2000 2000 आदरणीय डायरेक्टर जे टी बी हॉस्पिटल एंड डायरेक्टर डॉक्टर शाह एंड 
profesör dediğim ders var. But I express my gratitude for the honor that has been bestowed on me. Thank you, sir. I I may inform the audience here. Perhaps many of them must be knowing that I joined this institution right from the beginning. At the inception of this institution, and I left in 2009. And I have a very pleasant time here during the stay of about 39 years and have received a lot of cooperation and affection and help from all my colleagues, particularly from the Department of Anatomy. I have also received help and cooperation from the non-teaching staff of different categories technicians, ministerial staff, even Safai Karamcharis, everybody has been nice to me. And I remember those old days and I feel extremely happy whenever I enter this campus. It's a homecoming. I love this coming to this place. I derive maximum pleasure when I come to this institution rather than I don't enjoy going to the Canard Place and going to the Picture Hall, I drive maximum pleasure here. Thank you all very much for the love and affection that you have shown to me. Thank you. I'll remember it forever. Thank you so much, sir. Our next professor is Professor S.K. Bhargav. He is a former professor and head of department of radiology, eminent radiologist, teacher, researcher and author, founder of department of radiology, UCMS and GTBH, past president IRIA 2005, more than 350 research papers and 14 books published in search credit. 1987 to 2011, he was HOD department of Member of various committees, MCI, UPSC, CBSC, NB, Awards, Dr. B.C. Roy Award 1998, Sir G.C. Boss Oration Award, IRA 1996, Distinguished DNB Excellent Teacher Award, NB Dignitaries like Professor Piyush Gupta, Principal, Dr. Tajinder Singh, Dr. Dhira Saha, Sa Dr. Asmita, my old colleagues, UCMS, most of them are very familiar and still in our hearts. The staff of UCMS and GTB Hospital, friends. It is indeed, I must congratulate and compliment Dr. Piyush Gupta to initiate this oration and Lifetime Achievement Award. I will never knew that it started last year. I thought it started from this year. And also thank him to nominate me as one of the awardees. After receiving a phone call from Dr. Piyush Gupta, I was just really thinking two, three days, very deep thought that what really I have contributed to UCMS. I was really perplexed at why he has selected my name for a contribution in UCMS. I could not decide. Two, three days I was really perplexed to think. Then I 
said that UCMS has given so much to me. UCMS has given a platform to us to survive and to work. And without that, we cannot project ourselves. UCMS has given a congenial, cordial atmosphere to work. UCMS has given us all resources at his hand, whatever limited resources they had. They have given us to work. UCMS has given a clinical material of GTV hospital by which we were able to publish. I think if I say about myself, I have published more than 350 research papers from this institution itself. I have published more than 14 books of radiology. I was appointed in various committees of UPSC and National Board and because of my position, this is UCMS has given to me. It is not SK Bhargava which has been nominated. It is because you are heading the department here. You are working in Delhi University College of Medical Sciences. So we owe a lot of to UCMS to give. Instead that I have given anything to UCMS or UCMS I have to give. At this juncture I request Professor Piyush Gupta if you need my services, honorary services at any time, I am ready to give. Without any travelling allowance. I must say without any travelling allowance. I don't need that. Because still I owe a lot to UCMS which has given me a, so much fame in the country. I have been elected national president because of this position only. This is not that we have given. We started technician course which is the unique. I have to fight literally in academic council and EC to start BSc and MSc courses virtually fighting. But there is a lot of hiccup. Journey was very good, but a lot of hiccup and challenges were there. And with every life you have faced. There are a lot of hiccup because working in a clinical department, radiology department, you don't have equipment. You cannot work. You have to send. We started MD radiology. I got permission in 1992. We got first CT scan in 2002. Ten years we have to send our students in Divan Chand and all that, Harsh Mahajan and all that at my personal level, so that when they go out, they should not face. But still, I don't think we have an MRI here. This is the biggest handicap, because this is Delhi University College of Medicine, it's a prestigious institution. And whatever, I should not use those words, still we don't have an MRI, whatever may be the region, we should have all those equipment available, so that we, whatever we produce MD here, they should be good. With that, few words. I thank all of you to be me here. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. I request to all dignitaries, please take a seat back. Music once admitted to the soul becomes short of spirit and never dies. Music is the strongest form of magic. Now it's time for the fun. I would like to call upon the stage our UCMS Teachers Choir in which Dr. Asha Yadav, Depa Professor, Department of Physiology, Dr. Richa Gupta, Professor, Department of Pathology, Dr. Sumita Heldar, Professor, Department of Pharmacology, Dr. Pragya Jain, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Pathology, Dr. Ankana Saha, Assistant Professor, Department of Anatomy, Dr. Swapna Chaudhary, for uh, Forensic Senior Resident, Dr. Rajni Kar, Professor, Department of Biochemistry, and Mr. Naresh Kumar Gita.
सम्मान जो करता है वीरों का निर्माण जो बनाता है इंसान को इंसान ऐसे गुरु को हम करते हैं प्रणाम शिक्षक दिवस की हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं आप सभी को नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू कॉल अप ऑन द स्टेज डॉक्टर खान आमिर मारू टू डिलीवर द वोट ऑफ थैंक्स फॉर द डे थैंक्स Today's thanks actually goes to all my teachers, all my seniors, 
and also my students who have taught me a lot. As uh, I remember Dr. Chaturvedi sir uh, many times says there that we are co-learners in this journey, the teacher and the student both. So I agree to that and thanks to all my teachers. So for today's event, uh, special thanks to Professor Tejinder Singh sir. Thank you sir that in spite of your busy schedule and also the uh, big uh, event uh, occasion that you had in your family, you took time and you are here with us in UCMF. And also thanks to sir for this Faber Fellowship. Uh, we have very good number of Faber Fellowships sir, uh, seven to be precise and uh, around five are here in this hall. We will have a photograph also with you if you allow. Thank you. I would like to thank our principal for his support uh, for and encouragement at all levels so that we are able and you are all seeing the difference that has happened uh, with this uh, launch of the Teachers Day program, the Professor ASP interrogation. Uh, I also thank uh, the medical director, uh, GTV Hospital, Professor Asmita Rathod. She has left, but uh, we would like to place on record our thanks for all the support uh, that we get from uh, her administration. I would like to thank Professor Dheeraj uh, from the Director uh, National Institute of Health and Family Welfare now. So sir, thank you very much for, uh, and again it was very hectic for you also from the ministry and all, but you were able to come to UCMS. Uh, we are very thankful to you sir. All the UCMS our Lifetime Achievement Awardees, the Professor N.K. Grawal, uh, Professor Neelamwani, Professor Ram Prakash and Professor S.K. Bhargav. Uh, thanks from the core of my heart that you all uh, made it a point to reach here and to give us time and it is also good that we were able to meet, uh, I, I hadn't met uh, two of you and today I was able to meet them and many of us I think it will be a thanks to you for coming and uh, gracing the occasion. Thanks to the administration, Mr. Rangabashiyam uh, from the Joint Registrar, Mr. Jitendra, uh, the DR, the uh, assistant registrars, uh, especially Mr. Paswan, uh, for their support in the conducting the various the various parts that you are seeing in the program. The, there has been a great help from all uh, the administration staff. Uh, Dr. Vishakha and Dr. Kirti, uh, thanks to both of you for comparing the program, for being the master of the ceremony. Uh, it was a very good master of ceremony. Thanks to you. Uh, Dr. Ghansham and Dr. Vishakha, thanks for uh, going to the railway station to receive uh, Professor Tejinder Singh sir. Thank you very much for your support. Thanks to Dr. Manish Gupta, the faculty in charge of the lecture theatre for his support in all the things that we do in the lecture theatres with his permission and his support and the facilities that he and his team provides. Thanks Dr. Farah Khalik, I am also the head of the department. The way you uh, allow the faculty to support the programs, I think it is commendable. So thanks to you ma'am a lot. Uh, a special thanks to Dr. Rajarshi Kar. Again, I asked that we should have some musical program and he brought the whole choir with him. And that is why I thank Dr. Asha Yadav, Dr. Sumita Halda, Dr. Prakya Jain, Dr. Ankana Saha, Dr. Richa Gupta, Dr. Sopnil Chaudhary, Mr. Naresh Kumar and Jeevan Goswami, the student team was right? Yeah. Namini. 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 The student who was on the drum. Namini. 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 Sorry. Thanks. Thanks to all the team and with the guitar and all the live performance that we had here. Uh, thanks to the LT staff, Mr. Alek, Mr. Bhavani and other LT staff also. Thanks Mr. Harpasad for the photography. Thanks Mr. Satish for uh, the, uh, uh, providing the driver services to us in this program. And all the senior residents and junior residents of physiology department, special thanks to you for your support in each and every step. And uh, Dr. Vivek, thanks to you for the photography, but I think it's through the photo will be easier. Thanks a lot. If I have missed any name unintentionally, I uh, beg your pardon. I apologize for that. Uh, thanks a lot. We come to an end of this program. Thank you.